This is Off Planet Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer, and we have a good long-awaited show here. <laughs> back about, God, it was almost, what, like six, seven, eight months ago? Longer than that now. Probably 10 months ago, maybe. Um, mm. Uh, we started a show that was intended to be sort of a recurring, somewhat recurring uh, series, but just the way things went, it didn't happen that way. Sometimes you throw stuff out there and it takes longer for the noodles to stick on the wall and people to start to examine them than you expect it's going to. But that time has come, and so we're here to uh, do round two with uh, Jeff Gates on the metaphysics of the blockchain and everything else. So, Jeff hello, Gates, welcome hello. back to Off Planet Radio. <laughs> yes, thank you. And uh, um, What's going on? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess I could just kind of quickly recap 2018 because we started a string of... And in case you guys are wondering, Jeff is a cartoon character. He isn't a right. cartoon back there. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> you kind of look like a Smurf this morning. But <laughs> oh, do it. <laughs> um, so we started a discussion and um, there was... There was a lot of internal stuff for me, so I kind of went off grid. I deleted Facebook. I got rid off of social media, and just you know, with your help and others in in this group, just kind of went IRL or in real life. Just connected and uh, adventured and researched and actually did things um, that manifested, and it it was a great year. Um, uh, well, it was an outstanding year. Um, but a lot of the audience uh, knows me kind of for keeping track of the cryptos. So I just kind of want to recap that at first of what okay. I saw. So I watched the Bankers Unite or Tether, all of the fractional exchanges to control the price in a seemingly way to to grab all the cryptos out of the weak hands, meaning the, the audience or, or members or clients that uh, were in it for the money monster reasons. Um, and I, I'm just wondering if, uh, if just 25% maybe of the cryptos are even on the exchanges at all. It's all fake now. Um, when you so say fake, what do you mean? So all of the exchanges are actually interconnected by the administrators of this planet, at, in my perception. And if you put your said cryptos on one exchange, they kind of show up on the other exchanges as um, transactions or uh, ability to transact. So they're all using one pot of cryptos, but they're saying that they're all trading different pots. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like with fractional reserve banking, when people think there's $100,000, but really there's just $10,000 and it's been promised to 10 different people. Correct. Kind of thing. Or, right, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I watched the influencers, the crypto Twitter and, and these guys pleading for the bankers, ETFs, exchange, exchange traded funds and all this Wall Street bullshit uh, and money to come into the space. and that confusion, as Andrew DeSantis uh, coined, uh, has a tax. And that tax was profound. Um, so the people wanted the quote unquote banksters or elite to come into the crypto space to get to give it motion. Yep. Right. So they begged them to come in with their big dollars and really give it give it motion. And they were taxed for the idea that that could actually happen. And these people went and did what they always do, just what they've done with regular cash and what they've done with silver and gold and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Yep. Okay. So um, the money they, monster. So the money monsters thought they were in control and that's the confusion they, ta they were taxed for. <laughs> it, it, yep. It had the stronger force. And what right. in, the intent of Bitcoin was, was not 
was not spread. It, the, I didn't see the community grow. Um, okay. So um, with this fractionalized exchange and these stable coins causing this confusion, um, I think a game theory is at play and it's strange looping back onto itself. Um, so let's go meta or let's go metaphysical. Can you explain to the people what a strange loop is? Okay, a strange loop is say you're on an adventure, you have a starting point, and you go through a loop that's, you know, full of novelty and surprise and, and you know, uh, the universe calls that value where you, you go on a loop, you end up w back where you started with much more awareness and okay. um, wisdom. Gotcha. Um, so it's not like you're going down a dead end hole. So it's not like just going in circles, like beating your head against the wall. Right. This is a circle that you gain value and knowledge and experience from. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's all entangled with the cast and char characters that you are interacting with. And that you are. And that you are, yes. Okay. <laughs> so getting back to meta. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of uh, talking to a, a smaller group here. Um, and it specifically pointed to Andrew DeSantis's crew, as well as some of us, the high information crowd. So in July, my little team surrogated the Bitcoin life form. And uh, that's a thing that I know how to do. And I call it a replay attack. Can you explain, can, just for the people, some people may not know much about the healing modalities that you work in. So can you explain to people briefly what surrogating something means in this, in this, you know, in this sure. idea and then what, what, um, what a replay attack is or what you mean by a replay attack? Okay, everything's alive in this reality. Um, and whether it's a tree, a rock, uh, a business entity, um, a piece of code, um, an animal, Everything's alive and there are methods out there and I've found many more than I thought existed in this last year um, that you can call forward the spirit of these uh, vehicles per se or entities or animals and um, assist it in clearing dimensions of time that it incurred trauma. So I call that replay attacking, meaning call, surrogating something, someone, and metaphysically going back to a dimension of time where it incurred something that it wants to change. It's, it's learned the lesson. So like when somebody is abused as a kid and then they start acting out and doing things that, that they wouldn't necessarily have otherwise done had their life proceeded in a healthier fashion from the... Correct. Okay. So um, in that dimension of time, there's judgments, there's decisions, there's agreements that uh, that uh, spirit has, well, it's not the spirit, but it's the vehicle, it's the soul, it's the ego, that has trapped in the field of their being and they didn't let it go. So um, you can simply assist that being uh, in, in, uh, Resolving that. Um, I'm struggling because there's a lot of detail to that. Mm -hmm. I've spent, what, four or five years on this, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's natural for me, but I, I do appreciate having to explain that to somebody that doesn't have a, a clue. You're doing a good okay. job. You're doing a good job. All right. So... Um, People, if you have questions, you can ask them in the comment section, yeah. and we'll, we'll try and get to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I understand the, the, these are concepts at a level that um, we'll talk about later as far as, um, you know, characters of the game, whether it's NPC a primary character or a meta primary character. We'll get to that. Okay. So back to... Uh, letting Bitcoin, the life form, replay attack some dimensions of its evolution. Um, we uh, let it do that. And 
Satoshi Nakamoto is not a person, it's a group. I'll just say that. I have a knowing of this. So, and this is, this is my version of reality that I saw that in. So I'll just put that out there. Um, now, after we did that, um, I was in LA and we sat down for lunch and I didn't front load you, but I asked, you know, what do you see if you look at Bitcoin right now? Remote view. Yeah. And do you remember? What did I say? <laughs> you remember that where when you see things that are imbalanced or have issues, um, they're like this or that or something like that. And when you remote viewed it, it was diagonal like it was uh, balanced. Yes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So without yeah, so like basically, you. What, like, so when I see things in a, like in a, like when things sort of, um, with anything that I'm looking at, and generally I'm, when I'm remote viewing, in my case, I'm generally remote viewing aspects of myself. Usually a lot of times when I like, identify them or whatever, they will be um, vertical or horizontal. And then if I look at them, because it's almost a way of just to identify that something's there. And then if I look at them and they're sort of in harmony, if it's, they will move to a diagonal angle like this, or if it's something that has a diagonal and a vertical, that'll then move to like a, an angled on both sides kind of situation. So, yep. which, which, which means that the system is open and can be accessed as opposed to a closed system that is all about a closed system. So when I'm okay. working with myself, you know, we keep ourselves protected on a certain level as we're, as we're out in the world, but when we're opening ourselves, you know, to allow access to be able to make, you know, uh, improvements, changes, um, take in new information or whatever, those, it, it, the open system works better at an angle. Okay. So without front loading you, you, you said that, and then you're like, oh shit, it knows what it is now. Um, and so as as beings or entities evolve, they go from a thought to a thought form to a life form to an entity. An entity knows what it is and it has the right to evolve further. But um, at, at the time that we surrogated Bitcoin, it was still a life form for whatever reason. I guess it was confused. There was too much manipulation in its evolution. It, something was going on. And you're like, oh, it's an entity. So that was a amazing little uh you know moment of validation for me mm -hmm. and then and then it was not even days later we saw the bank starting to change some of their etfs and the dates and uh the influencers crypto twitter influencers um, and YouTube influencers were like, well, I guess this bank money isn't working out so well. I mean, B Bitcoin went from 20 grand down to whatever, four grand at that point. Yeah, I was like, I can probably almost afford one. <laughs> right, right. Um, so that whole uh, event um, was super interesting and it kind of really gave me a glimpse into meta technology or the ability to um, assist that in a, in a human plan type of way. Um, I still see Bitcoin as a digital equivalent as like, for instance, the mycelium network in Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> um, I know that's weird, but there's these TV shows all over the place like, like Game of Thrones has their Werewood Tree Network. I'm talking mm. about organic networks that connect everything in ways well, nobody understands. We have to always come back to Fringe for some reason, right? So there was that one episode where the boy was hiding in that underground space because the other kids were making fun of him and he d developed this sort of emotional attachment or relationship to this fungus that was growing underneath the ground there and the fungus started to become uh, mm. dependent on his emotions for how it behaved, Yep. right? So the... Uh, the way people are thinking about something has an effect on how it develops and grows and the feelings that it has about itself. What, what's the other strange, it's on Netflix. Um, uh, Stranger Things? Stranger yeah, Things. That, that, that thing is conscious underneath, yeah. That, yeah. That, mm -hmm. 
There's examples all over the place. Yeah. So um, now the clones, the copies, the NBC tethers of Bitcoin, although they're valid because we're in this universe of duality, everything exists, the confusing or the not confusing. Um, it, it's all still happening. Um, and it, it's just pick your reality. Are you confused or not? So, I mean, if you're investing- And it's okay to be confused. It, yeah. it, it's not that one reality is better than the other per se. We have to sometimes go through a period of confusion and understand, you know, and sometimes, uh, sometimes it's not good to not be confused because sometimes we're not confused, but we're also not right. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, I mean, if you're investing in crypto-based collectibles, um, I, I, would just, I would wonder if you're confused about what the intent of cryptos is. What do so you I'll mean? Just, what, what are crypto-based collectibles? Uh, there's things like crypto kitties and um, What's they're that? just digital uh, characters or things on blockchains that just because they're, they're uh, distinct or- but what, is, what is a crypto kitty? Like what it's is actually it? a picture of a kitty that is distinct. It doesn't look like anything else. So, and it's a cartoon character. Kitty. So you're basically just designing your own cartoon. You're, you're using your money to design your own cartoon? Pokemon cards or, yeah. Okay. So, oh, it's like Garbage Pail Kids, but the yes. digital Garbage Pail Kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of the, the 2018 update. Now, we went on a couple adventures, but I want to talk about them later. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave that there. Okay. So uh, our initial video was kind of mostly about decoding Andrew DeSantis in the first hour um, that we did six months ago or whenever that was. Was that last year? It was last year. It was, yeah. it, I mean, but it was like, I think, I feel like it was at least six months ago, but maybe even closer to eight or 10 months ago. Yeah. It, it was either right before, or right? We went to Sonia's retreat. So right. July, August, yeah. something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Okay. So um, speaking of meta tech, um, I decided to, he's, he's created this DLS.org entity, this game. And it's really tough to understand or even figure out this what this is that's why uh actually i've started directly tweeting with him so there is interaction but he won't talk yet this drives me mental but um i surrogated this dios.org entity and let it replay attack its detrimental dimensions of time of its evolution and you know, well, when should we tell people real quickly before you say this, what Deus is? Because I'm not sure you or I even have a complete understanding, but what I get from it, you go there and it's just this sort of weird graphic that if you click on a certain area, it creates a reaction and behavior on the rest of the board. So I feel like it's a way of saying that like, wherever the pressure is applied will create a mandala or fractal explosion of activity around that. And each pressure point is unique and you, you will never get the same, the same sort of reaction twice. I cannot answer that question because um, it clearly, that's an entry or a entry point into the game. Mm -hmm. So let me finish this thought okay. and maybe it'll answer it. So, Literally two or three days later, uh, DeSantis reactivates his Twitter account. Um, he sporadically disappears. And he announces that uh, after weeks or months of not playing, playing Dios, he decided to play Dios and he uh, and deep, Google's DeepMind and a couple nation states played the game together. And he won deep Google's deep mind and these nation states. So it's kind of like a updated multidimensional version of chess. So like when they had the kid play the, com the computerized chess or whatever, and the computer is capable of doing moves really quickly and faster, but isn't capable of conceiving of, or unique new moves. So and okay, like that kind of thing. 
I can't answer that because his tweets are cryptic, but it profoundly freaked him out. Um, freaked now, him out or freaked them out? Um, him, f from what the tweet said. So okay. he saw that technology is far beyond what he thought it was. And um, it, there's metaphysical aspects in these CPUs that he couldn't even grasp. And it, it seemed to freak him out. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I'm just going to give up on tech. I'm going to go be a doctor, freak out. Like, um, but the fact that he beat DeepMind and these nation states, uh, do not uh, underestimate this. this. <laughs> right. Well, that's the power of the human ingenuity to, you know, yeah. deal with whatever problem comes their way and find a way around it. Yeah. Yeah. So right about that time, uh, I sent him the link to our video, Decoding DeSantis video, and he watched it in real time was tweeting me. He's like, oh, I didn't know I was meta a metaphysician. And so now he seems to be embracing this meta, embracing this meta shit, right? Um, it's like uh, some of his crew is like, "Hey man, I'm still rewatching that video. I, uh, you know, the I'm starting to appreciate your domain, so to speak." So this is kind of why I wanted to do a video. Like, there's much more to this meta shit than these kids know, or off-planet, high-information crowd knows. And um, it's time to start talking about start this talk, stuff. Talking about, talking about this. Oh, I got an echo. Okay. You're good on my end. So, so oh, stunning echo. Um, um, somebody popped on. Okay. So the, the update to DeSantis. We just get a visit from Deos.org. <laughs> Yeah, the update to DeSantis is he tweeted, um, you know, after this freak out, he kind of disappeared for a while and uh, uh, he came back on and he, he's like, in a direct message to me, he says, well, I'm now copying Twitter and the CDMA or what we know as a cellular phone network um, and things have got much better. So that alludes that he was in a funk and decided to do create something. Now, is he making something completely decentralized and deplatforming resistant? I mean, this is what has, has just pissed me off this last 2018. And even Cliff High uh, tweeted it. He's like, if we wouldn't have been distracted this whole last 2018, I wonder where the code and the rep, you know, the replacements for YouTube and Twitter and mm -hmm. Facebook and all this would have been. What if that was the purpose of Russiagate, right? What if that was the whole purpose of Russiagate was to get people completely distracted from whatever their thing is, but largely because these people who do this shit are mostly concerned about money and currency and energy and all that kind of stuff right, to get people distracted from creating decentralized forms of communication, currency exchange, all that kind of stuff. Yep, I wanna talk about this later, but this whole Tataria mud flood reset research that's going on uh, from, it basically started when Russia released all the historical um, pictures that are pre uh, 1700. Um, so, uh, oh shit, I just got wiped. What was I talking about? Tartaria mud flood pictures released from Russia. Um, we were talking about if we were distracted for, with Russiagate because so, to take people's focus off of, um, off of, you know, creating decentralized communication platforms. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, we wasted a year. Okay, this whole Tartaria thing, if you look at these churches, there's clearly Tell secret... People because it's something we haven't talked about on the show, and while I know that there's one portion of the YouTube internet that has really, really gotten into this Tartaria mudflood thing, there's a lot of people who've never heard of it. Yep. So this is a community on YouTube that has, in my opinion, uh, 
researched these old churches and old buildings all over our planet that clearly have uh, free electricity uh, uh, um, technology built into them. Mm -hmm. They have the secrets of human um, experiences, uh, you know, all the things that the quote Freemasons and all these other groups um, have kind of kept to themselves. But if you go to these buildings, I, I, I can't do this justice, but this community is researching the crap out of it. And it, it's not like the flat earth thing or where there's all these cults and limited hangouts. They're seriously asking questions about what is all these buildings that are made in ways that we can't really duplicate today and so beautiful and acoustically, uh, energetically, metaphysically, they have secrets all over them. Um, how do we go from that to the one I world can, trade center? Bullshit. Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just bullshit. Like when I build a house, it's not gonna have sheetrock. I'm not gonna live in a box or create another box house, for example. I want something beautiful and that may be going against the grain, we'll see. But, um, you know, Crow 777 did a really good uh, co synopsis of, he's cautious about this whole Tartaria research because he doesn't think it was a one world event in 1812 that did a reset. But um, there seems to be pockets all over the planet that went through a reset, like- Wait, the, 1812, isn't that when Lincoln did his address in 1812? This is, they're just the kind of dialing press, right so that that's just an interesting I, that's the first thing I, I didn't know this was an 1812 kind of thing so that's interesting okay it's one of the reset dates that they're dialing into and they're just researching i'm not saying this is a fact in any way right um but something happened around that time that there's orphan trains all over the planet to repopulate empty cities like san francisco was empty um it's just a whole fascinating thing. And yeah. uh, on my YouTube, I have a playlist, J Jeff W. Gates, um, that I've kind of tapped or tagged some of the channels that are oh, at least starting points. Okay. So, and, and on my YouTube channel, um, I have the Sonya Barrett playlist and the Raz Ben playlist that are, yeah. are interesting research points too. So, okay, back to DeSantis. Um, if he is uh, creating a replacement for Twitter, meaning he's going to fork Twitter and broadcast it over, it seems like the CDMA cellular network um, so that nobody can intrude on you or, or censor you or this or that. I mean, a phone call, if I phone you, I'm portaling to another dimension. I'm portaling to your dimension. Yes. Well, whole... especially, especially the way we did it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, uh, my whole house basement flooded uh, with sewer water and I, uh, I unplugged the internet from outside the building and the power from outside the building, had my phone on Wi-Fi only you know, also and airplane I, mode. Yeah. Airplane mode. And I managed to get through. Yeah. We talked for like three minutes and then I realized how the fuck is this working? And as soon as he told me <laughs> I have my phone on airplane mode, then it cut off. Then so it cut off. That, like what we figured from that is we don't actually need the technology. We just think we do. And mm -hmm. as soon as we acknowledge that we need the technology, then we do. Yep. So, right. <laughs> just, we laughed about that one. Okay. Yeah. So um, in one of his tweets, he, uh, and I, I meant to forward you this, he is, is contemplating or he put forward the concept of what um, the Unfuckers United crew, uh, Lisa Harrison's crew, Off Planet crew, we've all contemplated this, this group intention thing. He's calling it a global consciousness sink. Uh, I don't like that. Um, that's kind of hive mindy uh, as far as wording, but um, if 
if that's what he's contemplating, I, this could not only assist this, a conversation about this could not only assist him, but us. I mean, if we want to do a group intention, how do you do that? Um, I mean, what do you focus on? And now on one of our adventures, I want to tie it back to one of our adventures. So we went to North Carolina, to Charlotte. <laughs> and uh, I, w I wanted to look at art before we hit the airport, but we walked downtown Charlotte and right by the B of A headquarters building. Well, it, it, actually it started way before that. It started the moment we got off the freeway. We we're like, this That's is weird. Right. <laughs> it was like the matrix forgot to boot all the background. There was no construction, no traffic, no airplane noise, no. There was uh, no people. No people. And immediately we're like, what, what's going on? We were, I was on edge. I'll speak for myself. I, yeah, uh, I, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was already on edge that morning, probably for other reasons. Right. But I was like, we were both were like, this is pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> Are we the only ones here? <laughs> And once, once we sat down for lunch, the, the background started booting, you know, the NPC started moving about, the noise was there. Well, we, but it, we needed other people. We needed a waiter to come. And so we, we beckoned yeah. the players to start, you know, the characters to start, you know, moving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, uh, the short of this is, I mean, we walked past the B of A building, which had a guard and talking to a kid. And that happened for the whole time we were there. Uh, the the signs around the sidewalk were were like kind of late they live signs there were yeah there were, there were words that were directly focused to us and it was mm -hmm. like so at, at at the moment I'm like oh shit this is like this is like on a ley line or a telluric current or something in that anything's possible like it's kind of like a blank slate uh, piece of land where you can create a reality and b of a was on top of it to create that whole banking enslavement and if you guys reality. look at your most a lot of your credit cards and stuff the payment deposits for them if it's not in delaware it's usually in north carolina right yeah um so that was a really i i remember kind of walking to the car going oh i think it was at that point i'm like Oh shit! If you could create a reality, what would you create? And my my mind was blank. I hadn't really ever gone down that thought train of, well, what would I create? Um, what would I change? Or um, it was a profound moment for me. Like, mm -hmm. um, if you actually had this chance, what would you do? And uh, um, so. Going back to group intentions, what would you actually intend? Now, you have to understand that um, uh, in his idea of, okay, there, he creates an app and there's a group intention, everybody focuses on it. And when they're done focusing on it, there's some signal that, okay, we're done. And everybody just leaves like it didn't even happen. Like a flash mob that it's just, it happened, you swarm it and then you're gone. Yep. But you do it with your mental energy instead of, instead of with your physical body. So what kind of intents would you do that don't violate universal lore? Okay, can you, so go ahead with the universal lore for people because not, that's a term that's particular to some, some stuff for people. And so can you explain what you mean? Okay, I think I might have to... Okay, so somebody created this universe with a thought, and the universe has rules. I listened and, to a video the other day that said that it was 3D printed, and, it put cut, and, and there was a compelling case for what they were saying, in my opinion. So, okay. Oh, okay. But I thought, yeah. So but they had I, the thought before they 3D printed it. So, yes, there you go. Correct. Okay. So, this is, just, this is a moving target uh, perception of, it's just my narrative. Let's just call it my my fluid moving narrative so okay uh this universe has laws and lore or rules to it uh such as free will um anybody that enters in it has the ability to create stories of value meaning um to me value is created when you do something 
of novelty or surprise. Uh, universe want something new, creative, surprising. Um, and something that will then cause people to, when they see it or experience it, have other thoughts that are new and creative and surprising. It's like an ongoing. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So to me, universe is racist. It demands that there's a variety of everything that is valuable. There's not one race of you know, humans on this planet. There's not one race of trees or rocks or crystals or it's all variety because everything that's different is valuable. Mm -hmm. Universe is not confused about this, but you people know, sure are. <laughs> yeah, one world agendas certainly are. Yeah. Um, okay. So in this reality, participants create their own rules and laws of their own games. I have rules and laws for my game. You uh, have different ones for yours. Because um, universe supports all realities and games, macro to micro. As a participant. You come in from outside of the universe. I like to call that a fractal and it's a higher self. So if a higher self comes into this universe, um, you, you don't come into uh, this universe without creating imbalances to balance because you need, you need to create stories to create novelty and surprise. You can't come into a utopia or else shit doesn't happen. It's all perfect. It's all done. So if your fractal self comes in, it fractalizes to many spirits. And right now, there's TV shows like uh, Sense8, mm -hmm. uh, The OA. Mm -hmm. Which is um, coming back, apparently. Randy told me the second season is about to come. I didn't know there was going to be a second season. I just finished in it finished it and it is metaphysical on so many levels i can't even exaggerate they're talking about their fractal aspects so there are, it's on netflix now yes oh good i'm watching this week cool oh yeah it's unbelievably good so um if you're if your spirit fractal or if your higher self fractalized to many spirits there's really no such thing as time Mm -hmm. past present and future that's well been well established on off planet radio <laughs> uh your fractal aspects are doing things they're creating imbalances and balancing them and, and creating stories and all this back and forth back and forth um so let's see is there a prime spirit i i would like to think i'm prime but i don't know um i know that in the modality that I do of replay attacks, if I call forward one of my fractal aspects that made an agreement that's now bleeding over into my reality, I can have that fractal aspect replay that dimension of time so it no longer affects me. That's, that's the short of it. So I do understand that fractal uh, aspects exist and I can call them forward and correct imbalances. I know that as a knowing, I do it almost every day. So um, TV shows like Sense8, they're showing you how uh, their fractal aspects are showing up in their life. And they, they I have, oh, they don't get pissed. But I have a friend that has physically met one of their fractals. And I, it's just lost on me on how that experience actually works in real life. But I've had some of our mutual friends remote view that situation and they're like, holy shit, that's a fractal aspect that they've met in real life. Mm -hmm. like, okay. So that's probably deep and crazy. And um, so that's kind of the, the story or the game that's set up now. Universal lore, tying that back, there's things like only the creator of their creation can change their creation. I can't force you to change your creation. I can coerce you and trick you and, and stuff like that. But really, um, that's one of the universal lores that stands. Now, if I'm affected by your creation, I can replay attack my reaction or effect to your creation and 
make it not affect me anymore because your creation is your reality, but somehow I interacted with it and it affected me. Um, now, there's another one. He who enters the game of another is subject to the laws and rules of that game. So if I entered your house and you have this rule or game going on and I interact with it, well, uh, I'm subject to those rules. So if, what is it? Uh, what's the desert conference that just went on? Contact There's, in the desert. Contact in the desert has rules and yes, laws of they, their game. Yes, definitely. <laughs> if you, or, or um, what's on Black Rock? Burning Man. Burning Man, for sure. Yeah. Burning Man has rules and laws of this game. If you participate that, in that and you don't have your shields up, you don't understand that game, you don't have rules to your own game, shit's going to go down in your reality uh, if you're not paying attention. And that's what they bank on. So there's these, like, the last one that I'll touch on is the karmatic law of reciprocity. Now, I think Freeman. Reciprocity? Yeah, reciprocity. Okay. I think Freeman even brought this up. Um, that if you let it be known what you're going to do some, to someone beforehand, it removes the con consequences or violation of free will that you're doing to somebody. So the administrators of this planet, for instance, if they're going to do something to the collective, they're going to let everybody know through the arts, the media, directly, and they're going to give everybody the opportunity to do something about it, to bypass it, to get out of the way or stop it. And if you don't, you are in tacit agreement with it. Now, uh, there's a lot of gray space to that and wiggle room and this and that, but that's what they go by that they believe in. Um, so these, there's these general rules to the universe that goes beyond just uh, being born, understanding the rules of the game from your parents or the community. There's, there's a bigger level is, is what I'm saying. And if you're going to do group intense, you need to be aware that this stuff is going on. Um, so I'm just asking if DeSantis's crew understands that. I mean, did the Masons teach him these rules? So mm. that's already set. Um, does this would this app protect the participants from violating that lore? Um, one of the data sources in the in my field was John Lamlash. Mm -hmm. And he did a group focus intent a couple years ago now of actually trying to kill J.K. Rowling mm. using courting or what he, they call the shark doing, <laughs> right? This, was, this is a very bad example of uh, group intent and it violated lore and even I, Randy. I, did, I had no awareness of this. Yeah, even this Randy was a huge just, red flag on him, yeah. Yeah, For even Randy was, stuff, holy yeah. shit, this guy went to the dark side. Yeah. It didn't work, by the way. Um, mm. So that's interesting in itself. Um, Why was he wanting to kill J.K. Rowling? He thought that she was pivotal in the magi of this planet or something. I, huh. I just can't remember. Okay. So I just finished American Gods or American Gods TV show is, is started to, or I think we're three into it. It's phenomenal also. Um, and the one spider guy goes, you know, anger gets shit done. And a lot of these group intents are out of anger. Um, so that's, that's a caution. So if this, this can be a, a thought, uh, you know, a web gathering or something later, but what, what kind of intents would you have? You wouldn't want to go attack things. You would want to say things like, like right now, Trump is signing the EMP attack legislation or executive order. Would, could a group intent be, I don't want to experience an EMP attack? As simple as that. Um, I don't want to experience nuclear war and just take, take those realities off the table. table. 
so mm -hmm. to speak. Now, I, I was even thinking of, well, if someone's voting for war on my behalf, because uh, I'm a citizen of the United States. No, you're not. Well, okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't um, what if you did a group intent that if somebody's doing that on my behalf, um, the person voting for that actually goes to the front line of the war until the war is finished. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, there could be crafty human ways to do intent. Mm -hmm. um, and intents have to also consider, are you violating the free will of others and their learning their lessons or having their experiences of balancing their imbalances? So, you know, um, if somebody has to go to war because they need to experience what it's like to be at war because in a past life or aspect, they caused a war, Mm -hmm. They need the chance to balance that imbalance. So there's a lot to this group intent conversation that can be had. And where's the intent going of this energy going? Is it going back to the collective or is it going to something else? So mom brought up, well, group intent is kind of prayer. You're praying to a God or deity. You're not praying to the collective. Um, so where's that energy going? What are you feeding? That's, that's a big question. Um, and if you have an intent, is the equal opposite being cr created? Um, this gets pretty interesting. Um, now, as we know, contact in the desert and Burning Man and, and all these group things, they, there's dangers to this because the individuals participating think. Um, uh, I mean, even going to Disneyland. Right. Yeah. But there's an illusion of invulnerability. Mm -hmm. There's a belief that the group is inherently moral. That you're amongst friends. Uh, there's a collective ras rationalization of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and we've talked about this you know, you're in an echo chamber or close circle of ideas and intents. Um, you know, I, I get upset when uh, Cliff High is, is referencing Catherine Austin Fitz, who's referencing Joseph P. Farrell, and it's like this closed loop. And I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, this, I don't like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so if you're doing honest research, you have to occasionally reference the uh, somebody you don't like, right? right. <laughs> because I can say that like a few of the most important bits of information that I've ever gotten in my life have come from people who I cannot stand and have not offered forth any other bit of information that is useful. But that one bit of information made lots of things that weren't making sense before make sense. And yep. I feel like when you, people get into a closed loop, they're uh, cutting off any possibility of, of those, those tidbits of information that are so necessary to, um, make some of these narratives make sense, you know, because no one, no matter how good of an explanation that they have for things, have been able to close the loop on what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so to, to close us out, um, has Andrew asked himself, why is he doing this? Is he, could he have been a perpetrator to the collective and now he's balancing an imbalance? Um, or is he just aligned with universe at the higher self or universal level trying to balance and balance? Um, I mean, he's, he tweets he's a Mason and he's from Stanford. I mean, is oh, he- Oh, didn't know he tweets he's a Mason. Yeah. He, is he assisting the, the inhuman plan of 5G and he doesn't realize it? I mean, there's- well, That's what I wonder about him because I, I've observed him enough to understand that there is a, a quality about him that is, I don't want to say not exactly human, like I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but that is uh, something else, right? And so we've talked about the possibility of his being augmented with technology or, or something like that. So is this a person who has, uh, you know, is he an MK kid who's been experimented upon 
with either, you know, certain things implanted or even just certain things being able to be done through spellcraft and, and frequency and whatnot. And he is, uh, while a very smart one, a certain type of, like, it's different than an NPC, but it's also not the same as a fully aware character. This is a person that has a certain level of, or a character that has a certain level of sentience, but it's focused on a particular goal, right? Mm -hmm. And so everything that he takes unconsciously is towards that. And so was he created, you know, did he have some natural ability that was either enhanced or, or something like that to, to do some of this stuff? And so he was created for this purpose, but somewhere along the line in the game, he caught on to something and is desiring to um, be a fully aware human or a fully sentient, you know, original unique player in the game and not one that's being, you know, not a heat seeking missile, right? He doesn't want to be a heat seeking missile. Everybody has the right to evolve no matter what agreements or yeah. projects or whatever you've been in. And there's ways to replay attack that, that we won't go into detail, but you can uh, close out any of those agreements, whether they come down through genetic heritage lineages mm -hmm. uh, or fractal aspects up to or the higher self. Even mistakes you've made earlier in this lifetime. Yeah. Yep. This, yeah. Yep. Yep. And you can create rules and laws inside you internally if you get exploited in whatever the, those ways that are ready on your time track to be exploited, or if they've already happened, you can send them back to the perpetrators, orchestrators, change the commands into the next dimension of where those exploits came from. Because, Even if they came from yourself, because as Sonia yeah. has said, we have this tendency to create all, all, all of these laws for ourselves that, yeah. Yep. yep. So there, I'm just putting it out there. There are tools out there that, should be considered and i just seem to be entangled with following him for whatever reason and um uh i would like to be of assistance instead of the problem so. <laughs> <laughs> interesting so you've you've had a lot of interact some interaction with him a lot of interaction with the cast of characters around him mm -hmm. um that seem to have in some ways, a better understanding of what's actually going on here than he does. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also, you know, I've talked about this a little bit, like, it's one of these things that, like, sometimes you'll become aware of something that is really interesting, and you know there's a there there, so you're looking for the information that's hidden between the lines, right? And, um, you know, like, I've yeah. done this before, too. Like, I've been sure that like a secret code is being laid down for me to, to pick up on, right? And right. so I'm looking and looking and looking and spending a lot of time doing it. And then at certain points, like I have to move on because even if there is a code being laid down here, the person who's laying it doesn't understand, well, understand it well enough to make anything comprehensible. And so I'm going to go away for a little while. I'll come back and check later. So you've done kind of like a bit of that. Like you come and go from this and whatnot. But, you know, um, in some ways, I guess maybe an audience that is capable of reading between the lines has to be developed before anybody feels like they can leave a message between the lines. Right. I don't know. I don't know what his intent is, uh, conscious or unconscious. He is interesting. Um, and I also wonder uh, how much of the reality that he operates in is being orchestrated by the technology itself. Like, he's, mm -hmm. a, you know, sometimes I hear you talk about how he figures out that everyone he was interacting with that he thought he was actually having conversations with were bots that were trying to get him to do things and whatnot, right? You talk about him uh, deleting and reestablishing his, his, you know, websites and accounts and things like that. Is he doing that or is that being done so that we think he's doing that, right? Mm, yeah. is, is he thinking his website and his Twitter page is up in, in whatever dimension he's doing it from it is, but in ours it's not, who knows? There's, I mean, right? So like if there's these, uh, universal laws for that then exists in this way too right like and it may just be the if there's bots interacting with him there's bots interacting with the audience too right or the the you know so oh big time and that's and I, also I, just like the technology like the other day we portaled into each other's dimension despite what the technology did and only when we acknowledged it did it show up like how much of that is at play here too right right so no, just following him, decoding him has exponentially advanced my adventure in, mm -hmm. in, 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 you know, what's going on. And as Sonia would say, the game, the technology of the game. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
I'm not asking or demanding for an interaction or whatnot because <laughs> I've already reaped the benefits of just following along and mm -hmm. hope to continue for more. So, all right. So we're coming down to the end of the first hour mm -hmm. here. Is there anything? Uh, and this hour will be up publicly on YouTube. Is there anything you wanted to get out there in this segment before we move on to the patrons hour? Um, no. The second hour will be juicy. The second hour. Of that. All right. There's the <laughs> teaser, guys. Before we go, if people want to respond to any of the things they've said or interactions, you're not much on social media. Do you have any way for people to sort of interact with you or just uh, telepathic messages at this point? Yeah. Uh, comments on your Patreon for now. I'm. I'm. Comments on Patreon or in the co in the comment section of the YouTube video for the public hour, and yeah. we'll do our best to address those. And he did mention his YouTube channel, Jeff W. Gates earlier. So, yeah. Alrighty. Cool. Well, um, uh, we invite you all to join us over on the other side for the patrons hour. We're going to get into some juicy stuff. And for those who are uh, sticking to the YouTube side, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> so, I'm this is off planet radio.